Sophia here from my great challenge welcome back to my channel it's Sunday it's 22nd I think is it man if I'm not oriented times three where are we going um okay it's Sunday that I know I can't remember the number it's all a bro I'm going to walk the dogs and have breakfast um, probably gonna have some oatmeal today because um, I have eggs but I don't have toast so I'm gonna have to um, do something else. I'll do uh, oatmeal with banana, something like that. I'm dying for coffee right now, but I do have to walk the dog, so I'm gonna do that. And uh, today's the day that I'm painting my new sewing desk. Um, he's drinking, that's what, you know, every time I film they have to drink, you get used to it. Um, I have to paint my new sewing desk, so I'm going to prime it first. I'm trying to do a good job, you know this, right? I'm trying to do as good as a job I can, because this thing is permanent. Well, to me, it's permanent. Um, there's a lot of projects I do, I kind of know that within two years it's going to be scrapped. This one, permanent, so I'm doing a good job on it. I have to prime it and I have to paint it. And then uh, tomorrow at work, we're all bringing in food and then we're starting to pack food into containers to distribute um, Thanksgiving meals for our patients. And uh, I'm on uh, mac and cheese duty. <laughs> Everybody loves my mac and cheese and my frittata, but frittata won't last too long. Uh, if we start distributing food on Monday uh, and people don't eat it right away, I wouldn't give them eggs um, necessarily. So, but mac and cheese can last so if you put it in the fridge. So, uh, request for mac and cheese. I gotta make a large mac and cheese tonight, so I'll probably show that. You've seen me do my mac and cheese before. That's the one where I put the Ritz crackers over it and a little bit of nutmeg. So I have to do that. I have to paint. If it's dry on time, I'd like to make something on my machine just to get a feel of, you know, how it works. Um, and then to see whether or not I have an issue with the cables. Some people already put out the Christmas decor and I'm supposed to do my front porch with Michelle and a bunch of other gal by December 1st and I have no clue what I'm gonna do this year. I really didn't plan on decorating the front porch this year for Christmas. I'm really toning it down this year, you're not right? It's been very difficult with COVID and everything. Um, we got like zero people coming for Thanksgiving this year. We got zero people coming for Christmas, like most of you. And by the way, I'm ordering for Thanksgiving. Yes, I am. Mm -mm, no shame. I am not cooking. Listen, I'm working my butt off at work right now, okay? My, my admin is gone. I am the admin plus the clinician and my team leader is working from home so I've been taking half of a task so pretty much for the last three months I've been doing two and a half jobs at my job plus what I'm doing here if anybody deserves to order in for Thanksgiving it's this girl right here we are ordering from Kings that's the supermarket where uh, Edward works we get a 25% discount on it it's gonna cost us barely a hundred bucks to get an entire meal done why cook it um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it so if you want to boo me for ordering food knock yourself out I feel no shame this is not the third year in a row that I do that you've all watched me cook an entire Thanksgiving meal from scratch it's exhausting I don't want to deal with it I get three days of actual time off um, it's a holiday on Thanksgiving and uh, I ask for a day off on Wednesday but I'm working on Friday when it's a day off for everybody else so I'm comping this on Tuesday so I actually have three days I want to enjoy my three days I don't want to be a slave to the stove anyway uh, somebody on YouTube told me the other day that I yap too much so I'm gonna stop here and go walk my dogs all right, so I'm back. And I'll tell you what, my first order of business right now is really to have a cup of coffee. I want to show you the uh, mug that Jamie sent me. Look, it's me! It's me right here, <laughs> wearing my purple. Uh, it says, my sewing room is my happy place. And it says, Sophia's happy place. Thank you, Jamie. It's really nice. Okay, so I'm going to make uh, oatmeal. I'm not cooking it, I'm just putting it in a microwave, so I got a cup of oatmeal. 
and I'm adding a cup of unsweetened almond milk and a little bit of coconut shavings. Give okay, a good stir and that's going in a microwave for two minutes and then I'll add berries to it. So I'm back in the basement and uh, I'm going to prime and paint the desk and yesterday I played around and I put the machine on it so I just want to show you what it looks like there we go a little great and this is gonna be great because I have so much room now and I can put all my stuff where I need it I can just open my drawers get my stuff it's the perfect height I have enough room here for fabric um, you know, obviously when I'm going to do large quilts, I'll have to move the machine to the other table um, because, you know, there's not enough room here for the bulk of a large quilt. Uh, the uh, boiler went on. Um, but otherwise, for just regular sewing, this is perfect. Like when I'm piecing, when I'm putting uh, a garment together, I, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Um, Okay, let's get going. I'm gonna I have enough paint left over from all the gazillion projects I've had in the past. I'm gonna start with uh, priming. I'm not gonna paint the face of the uh, uh, chests um, because they don't really need it. Nah, they don't. I'm just gonna do the side and the top and uh, do the primer first and then let it dry a little bit and then I'll do two coat of the same white that's here, so it's a glossy bright white, it's going to be beautiful. So happy. So I'm starting with primer and I have some leftover primer. I'm hoping this is enough. This is a Kills Premium Prime Sealer Stain Blocker. And the reason why I'm using a primer is because um, there's knots on the wood and there's still, believe it or not, <laughs> there's still oil in that pine and over the years I've learned that the hard way over the years um, those little dots come out so I have to really really cover it so I'm hoping I have enough sealer here and primer I don't know um, I just ditched two other containers that were very old and no good I'm just doing one coat of primer. I think that should be enough. So, let's see. I'm trying to work clean too using this cardboard.
So I have uh, one coat of primer on it and it's starting to shape up really nicely. Look at this. Doesn't it look like a professional desk? It looks awesome. I don't know about you, but I think it looks awesome. I'm very happy. Oh man, I can't wait to use it. So now I do have a little eek. Uh, the seam shows right here between the two pieces. Can I live with it? Absolutely. I'm pretty sure that once I put more coats of paint on it, it's going to be less visible. But yeah, this is basically what it's going to look like uh, in my little corner. Now I have to just sit here and watch the paint dry because, you know, primer has to dry a little bit. Um, this, I started here. This is pretty much dry already. So I'm going to give it a good 45 minutes and... Um, you can see on my face, so I'm really happy. This is ridiculous. It's it's not a selfish thing. It's my me time. That's that's really that's my that's my hobby. That's what I do uh, for self care. So I'm I'm really really taking my time and I'm enjoying the process. Um, what am I gonna do? <laughs> the paint dries. I tell you what. I'm gonna look for. Uh, books that I have and I'm gonna find a small project something small maybe like a little pouch something something small just to um, sew while this is drying I'm gonna do it on my old station here um, just to you know poke around and uh, have fun with fabrics because I really do need some self-care this weekend and uh, self-care is not necessarily makeup and you know putting a mask on and your feet up for me, it's being creative and doing something I really enjoy. So let me poke around my books and magazines and see if I can find a small project to do that won't take time. Lorna in um, the UK uh, sent me a book or was it two years ago I can't remember Lorna I can't remember was it last year uh, that's called tote bags and it comes with templates um, here's one of them and I'm going to make and I just showed that to you I'm gonna make this little um, cosmetic pouch and I'm making use of all of those spare uh, coupons of um, samples rather of fabric that I have that I found on the street the Durali fabric the upholstery fabric and I have a ton of them and I don't know what to do with them so guess what we're gonna use this on the outside and we're gonna use this on the inside you don't want too much pattern on the inside of a cosmetic pouch or whatever purse because otherwise you just can't find your stuff um, so that's gonna be the inside and I pretty much have to cut two of this and two of the other one and it's not big um, this is the size right here so what I gotta do now I'm not gonna cut this but what I need to do is figure out the orientation that I want um, the pouch to be on because there's a front and a back of the pouch and I do want to have um, some pattern and I gotta figure out if this is the top or if this is the bottom and this is pretty cool because this template is semi-transparent so I can kind of guide it uh, in a way where I can see which part of the design I'm gonna get I kind of like this onion thing here um, but I do like this too. So maybe with this I can capture both. I 
this is cut um, so this is going to be the inside and this is going to be the outside and basically the pouch is going to look like this right and when you open it it'll be like this inside which is bright enough that's good so I'm just giving them a good press and in the meantime my primer is dry so I'm going to put that to the side and I'm just going to go and put my first coat for the desk I'm just using this uh, bright white uh, glossy that I have left over from a previous project that's a uh, um, what do you call it uh, bear paint I know it doesn't make much of a difference, but here we go with one coat. Um, I really like it. Really, really like it. And from this side of the basement, again, don't mind the boxes on the side. They need to go to storage. This is what it looks like. See how much brighter this is? Oh, this is great. <laughs> this is great. Okay. Uh, I got my cup of tea ready and I am about to go and uh, assemble a pouch with a zipper. Now remember, the last time I did a zipper was my very first time, so I'm a little rusty on t in terms of zippers, so I don't know what it's going to look like. But I'm excited to be sewing, and I'm going to let this dry, and then I'll come back and do coat number two. So what i got to make sure I do here is read the instructions, because you know me. <laughs> We kind of guess more than anything else. Okay, so this is cut. Cut two layers, two lining pieces from the pocket template. With the cut out corners at the bottom, fuse fleece to the wrong side of the outer pieces. Ooh, I need fleece. Fleece? What do they mean by fleece? That can't be the same thing than us. That's got to be fusible stuff. Fuse fleece to the wrong side of the outer pieces. I don't know if I have enough fusible for this. I do. Okay. So fleece in England is interfacing. Who would have thought? Don't use your good scissors for plastic. I did it. Okay, so I gotta cut the same pieces. All right, be right back. We're gonna uh, fuse fleece. I have no idea what's going on and I love it. <laughs> I have no clue what they're saying. That is great, a big challenge. Okay, we're gonna remove the walking foot here. And we're gonna put the zipper foot on because apparently we're supposed to sew the zippers first. I have a vague clue <laughs> of what's supposed to happen. So here's the zipper foot and we're gonna Wait. Right, I'm missing this part here. Right, so instructions. Uh, with the slider out of the way, sew the top of one outer piece to the zip tape. Uh, right side together, you may find it easier to hand stitch the open end. Well, my open end is, uh, um, it's, it's just the right size zipper. Okay, closed first. All right, so my understanding is that I'm taking this with the notches at the bottom because that's the bottom of the uh, thing. I'm taking my zipper right side together and I'm going to sew from here to there. This is just making it in terms of size. This is not ideal. I could have gone with a little bit bigger but I'm using what I got in stock. And we're going to go all the way up there and this is going right here. 
right so then I'm supposed to take a piece of lining and it's got to be done the same way right here so that it sandwiches this piece in between so what's going to happen is that this is going to go ah he should use pins all right this is going to go come on this way basically I think I got it all right and then we'll do the same thing on the other side that's my understanding mm, I don't know Okay, so now I gotta do the exact same thing on this side. So I gotta think about it now. <laughs> How does one do that? Because uh, it just says repeat on the other side. So I gotta think about it. And you know, literally, if you know what you're doing, this is a five minute job, okay? But we've been here 20. <laughs> What did I do now? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. So now we got a pouch front, a pouch back. And when you open it, we got the inside. Okay. Open. It's gotta be. Uh, I got some thread here. I gotta get rid of. But all right. So the next one I make, I'll move the stitching a little bit away, more away from the uh, uh, zipper. I got a whole bunch of threads inside the zipper. I gotta take my um, tweezers and pull them out. Okay. Next step. Okay. The next step is to uh, open the seam. I mean the zipper, right? And then we're gonna put the two outers together like this and the two inners like that and you sew from one end to the other here from one end to the other here you go over the zipper and then from one end here like this and from one end here and you leave the corners open and I have no clue how to do the corners when we get to that I think I'm gonna have to do a YouTube video. I'm, I think I'm gonna have to go on YouTube because I have no idea. Okay, I don't need this foot anymore. So let me change foot. And when we come back, we'll do that. Then I'll do a second coat. And we'll finish it after that. Now, if I was doing all the way around, I would not be able to turn it and flip it, right? So this is the last piece here that's still open. I'm only going to do a little bit of it. It says to leave a turning gap of about 10 centimeters or 4 inches. So that's about here. And that should allow me to flip it. So let's see what happens when I flip it. I remember I didn't do the corners yet. flip it, I get a little pouch like this, all right? I'm not crazy about the way I did this here. Um, to be honest, I really don't know how to do it. <laughs> but it's my first pouch. Maybe it's not an easy pattern, I don't know. Okay, so this is all done. And then we have an inside here now. What do I do with that piece? 
that's not finished, does it get done by hand? And then how do I do the corners? And I'll do that when I'm done with coat number two. So I'm going to do coat number two, and while that dries, I'll finish uh, that pouch. It's the first time I make one. I think the zipper is inappropriate for that. I have a very, very thick zipper. What you're hearing in the background is the washing machine. Um, I'm sure there's a kind of zipper that's much lighter for this kind of project. So I'm ready to make the corners here. Um, this pouch is, I mean, it's functional, it's a pouch. I'm just not, yeah, I have paint on my fingers. I'm just not crazy about the way it looks. Um, I think the zipper is too big. All right, so you take this, you basically open it this way. All right. Uh, wait, this way. And you flatten this. One this way, one that way. All right. And then stitch right here. This way. Let's see what the corners look like now. Okay. All right. Hey, I got corners. Okay. So that's good. Now, I did the same thing with this one right here, but this apparently I got to do by hand. Um, I got to stitch all of this by hand. We're going to assume it's been done by hand. And I got a little pouch. Doesn't stay flat yet because I don't have anything in it. But the corners are done. See the corners? Okay. So it's not looking too bad. I actually didn't do too bad at all. All right, removing the extra zipper that was in here is definitely improving the way this is at the end here. And it's not going anywhere because I know it's sewn. Now, here is a little bulky. I should have snipped the edges of the zipper too, so lesson learned. But it works. I just got to do the stuff by hand and then remove all the extra threads that I have. And uh, I made myself a little pouch. So I need a ribbon. I have some upstairs. I'm going to go get myself a brown ribbon. And what am I going to do with this now? <laughs> I have no use for it. Uh, but I made a little pouch. And I like the fabric. And guess what? Because I said I wanted to do a good job on the desk, I found a can of clear gloss lacquer. So once everything is dry, I'm putting the lacquer on it uh, to protect it from scratches, dings, or whatever. And the leftover paint that I had, I used it around the basement wherever there was a nick or a stain or whatever. I refinished the top here of... Um... The TV stand, um, I gotta finish that here. Is that a shadow or paint? I don't know. Uh, so I redid that because you know the kids that just destroy everything. And then I have some scuff marks here that I covered, and I had some scuff marks here that I covered. Same thing over there. And the desk is on its second coat, it's ready for drying and the clear gloss. And I like it. Tell me down below, what do you think? In white, doesn't it look great? It looks like it belongs here. And to be honest, it be it looks like it was meant to be that way. Like it doesn't look like it's a uh, Rube Goldberg, um, Sophia type project. Well, maybe if you look closer. <laughs> but, you know, at a glance, it looks like it was meant to be a desk that was uh, shaped like that. So here's my lunch for today. I'm having a leftover shepherd's pie. That was a uh, frozen uh, dinner from last night and a big salad.
Right, so I'm going to go real quick because I have a lot of background noise and this is done and clean. I have two coats of gloss on it. It's still tacky to the touch, but it will be nicely protected uh, from scuffs, marks, whatever. Oh, boiler finally went down. Um, I can't wait to move my machine there. I'm going to let it cure for a good 24 hours before I do anything on it and this is my space now my sewing space I have all my fabric everything is put together oh man this is a dream come true okay uh, on this side I did one coat of the schlack clear gloss over this to protect it a little bit because let's face it between the brownies and uh, drinks this gets messed up really really fast so I'm glad I got a chance to do this and again, this will come down, so at that point what I may do is move this one over there and this one over here. That would leave me room for either shelves or uh, artwork, I don't know. And you're going to tell me down below what you think of this. And uh, I just posted on my private Facebook page, the Audrey Pottery Barn Corner Desk with drawers is pretty much $1,300. And this cost me 45 bucks <laughs> in wood. Uh, because I had the rest of the wood available. Well, a little bit over 45, 55 because I had to buy the uh, uh, half round. Uh, but I had everything else, the paint and the schlack and the nails and, you know, all the tools already. So for, let's say, 55 bucks or 50 bucks, I got something very similar that's going to serve the same, the same purpose. So if you want something like this, just go to your local thrift store or your, um, you know, what is it, uh, Rehab Habitat for Humanity Restore store, get two dressers, paint them in white, do the same thing that I did on top, and you'll have your fancy uh, corner desk. Now, when you walk in, does it look like the Pottery Barn? Of course not. That's not the intention. I'm just giving you a comparison, right? Um, it gets the same effect, the same purpose, the same use. And I saved a ton of money. Um, and it makes me very happy because now I got a cutting table and I got a sewing table. And yeah, it's expanding. I get it. But eventually the kid's going to move out. So what are we going to do? Um, you know? Um, oh, I could move to the second floor. That's right. Okay. I'm going upstairs and I'm going to prepare macaroni and cheese with Ritz crackers for my folks tomorrow. And then after that, I'll say goodbye. oven for about 20 or so minutes and uh, Scott is making burgers we're gonna have mac and cheese burgers that's for Willie and him Edward's at work until 10 30 I'm gonna have a salad with a tiny bit of mac and of with a tiny bit of macaroni and cheese and now I have to clean all of this mess over here put everything back together give me a thumbs up if you like my desk downstairs i don't know what i'm gonna do on tuesday wednesday well thursday is thanksgiving so obviously there's gonna be a thanksgiving um decorated table um uh, but there's gonna be several videos coming up next um after this one um i'm pr i don't know if i'm gonna edit on tuesday 
well probably for this video that's gonna come out on Tuesday or Wednesday uh, but anyway I got videos all the way up to the weekend now because I'm gonna be doing videos on Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday so I see you guys more than twice um, this week I hope you all happy about that and I will see you next time okay thanks for watching bye hey it's me and guess what click that thumbs up if you really like this video thumbs down twice if you didn't you can also share my video if you really, really liked it or save it to watch later. Also, you can subscribe to my channel, but don't forget to click that bell button so you are always notified when I post a new video. Thank you for watching!